in this lesson, we want to review solving literal equations. So, so far in our course, we've only looked at equations with one unique variable. So something like 2x minus 5 is equal to 11. We know if we solve this, we get x equals some number, right? So if I'll quickly solve this, I could add 5 to each side of the equation. We know that this is going to cancel. We would have 2x is equal to 11 plus 5 is 16. To isolate x here, we just need to divide both sides by 2. And we would find that x is equal to 16 divided by 2 is 8. So you see you have x equals some number there, okay? When you're working with just one unique variable, in most cases you get a variable equals some number. But when we talk about literal equations, we're talking about equations with more than one unique variable. So a lot of times we will work with more than one unique variable, especially as we get further along into algebra. So if we see something like, let's say, 2x plus, let's say, 5y, and let's go ahead and say this is equal to 20. Now, I can't get this in terms of a variable equals just some number because I have two variables involved. But I can still solve for one of the variables. I can choose to solve for x. I can also choose to solve for y. So if I wanted to just solve for x, what would I do? Well, if I want to isolate this guy, the first thing I always want to do is isolate the variable term that contains the variable that I'm trying to isolate. So I would start by just isolating the 2x. So to do that, I would subtract 5y away from each side of the equation. So I would have just 2x on the left. I know that this would cancel over here. 5y minus 5y, that's 0. So this equals, now I'll have my minus 5y and then plus my 20. Now, how can I get x by itself? Well, I just have the 2 that's multiplying x. So no change here. I just divide both sides of the equation by 2. But now over here, I'm dividing this whole expression here. I have my negative 5y plus 20. The whole thing's divided by 2. And let me scroll down and get a little room going. So over here, 2 over 2 is 1. So I just have x. And this is equal to you have your negative 5y plus 20 over 2. Now, there's different ways to write that. You could split that up as negative 5y over 2 plus 20 over 2. So I could also say x is equal to negative 5y over 2 plus 20 over 2. And of course, 20 over 2 is 10. So you could also write it like this. Either answer is acceptable, okay? But I'm just showing you that you can write things in terms of one variable. So I could say x equals something. I can also solve this equation for y. So if I want to solve for y, again, the first thing I want to do is isolate the variable term with y involved. So because 2x is being added to this 5y, I just subtract 2x away from each side of the equation. Very, very easy. This is going to cancel. We would have 5y is equal to, you have your negative 2x and then plus your 20. And of course, to get y by itself, I'm just going to divide both sides of the equation by 5. And so you'd have y is equal to, you have your negative 2x plus 20 over 5. And again, you could write that differently if you want. You can split that up and say this is y is equal to negative 2x over 5 plus 20 over 5. And 20 over 5 is just 4. So either way you want to write it, both these answers would be acceptable. We're just showing you that you can solve for one of the variables, right? So now this equation is in terms of y y equals some expression before we looked at x equals some expression. So when you get more than one unique variable involved, you're not going to have a variable equals some number. You're going to have a variable equals some expression. So normally when we talk about solving literal equations, we're talking about taking a formula and putting it in terms of one of the variables. So this is very useful when we look at application problems, right? So word problems. So we're just going to go through a few typical problems that you would see. And basically, we just need to understand how to solve something for a specified variable. So the first formula we're going to look at is for the perimeter of a rectangle. So if you have a rectangle, you have a length here and a length here. So on the top and the bottom. And then on the sides, you have your width, right? So length is labeled with L, width is labeled with W, okay? So the perimeter or the distance around a rectangle is given as 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, 
okay? So what we wanna do here is just solve for W and then also solve for L. Right now you'll notice that it's solved for P or put in terms of P because P is isolated on one side of the equation, right? You have P equals some expression. In this case, that expression is 2L plus 2W. All right, so to solve for L, let me just rewrite P equals 2L plus 2W. And if I wanna solve for L, again, I just wanna start by isolating the 2L, right? Always start by isolating the variable term, which contains the variable you wanna isolate. So all I need to do is subtract 2w away from each side of the equation. So I'm gonna have that p minus 2w is equal to 2l. And if I wanna isolate l there, what's being done to it? It's being multiplied by two. So just divide both sides of the equation by two. And I'm gonna flip this around. So twos cancel there. You get l is equal to p minus 2w over two. Okay, so this is in terms of l now. So if I wanted to put this in terms of W, we'd use the same thought process. So I wanna begin by isolating the term with the W involved. So to do that, I would just subtract 2L away from each side of the equation. So I would have that P minus 2L is equal to 2W. And again, to isolate W, I just divide both sides of the equation by two. Okay, very, very easy. Two over two is one, so you get W is equal to, so W is equal to, you get P minus 2L over two. And all I'm doing here is I'm just switching the variable to the left, that's perfectly legal, right? If I wrote this here as W on the right, and this is equal to P minus 2L over two, I can switch this around and say this is W is equal to P minus 2L over two, okay? It's the same thing, I just like my variable on the left, I don't like it on the right, but you can write it either way. They're both acceptable. All right, let's take a look at another formula from geometry. So we have the area of a trapezoid here. So A, which stands for area, is equal to H, which stands for height, that's this guy right here, times the quantity. You have an uppercase B, which is down here. That's the lower base. Then plus a lowercase B, which is up here. That's your upper base. So then we divide this by two. So what if I wanted to solve this guy for uppercase B? What could I do? Well, remember, you wanna isolate the variable term with that involved first. Right now, it's wrapped inside of a set of parentheses. So one thing I could do is just remove the parentheses with my distributive property to kind of get things started. So we would have A is equal to, you have H multiplied by, again, uppercase B plus lowercase B, and this is over two. So I have A is equal to, H times uppercase B is H times uppercase B, then plus H times lowercase B is H times lowercase B, and this is over two. Now, if I want to isolate, again, this term here to start, what I'm gonna do is just clear my denominator. I can easily do that by multiplying both sides of the equation by two. So this would cancel. Let me kind of go up here. I would have two A is equal to, you would have H times uppercase B, plus h times lowercase b. Okay, so what do I do from here? Well, I wanna isolate, again, this term right here because it's got my uppercase b involved. So all I'm gonna do is just subtract h times lowercase b away from each side of the equation. And so let me kind of scroll down and get some room going. I'm going to have 2a minus h times lowercase b is equal to h times uppercase b. So to get uppercase b by itself, I'm just gonna divide both sides of the equation by h, and this would cancel. So let me write my answer over here so it's out of the way. I have uppercase b is equal to, you have 2a minus h times lowercase b over h, okay? So that's just solving this for uppercase b. If you wanted to solve it for lowercase b or you wanted to solve it for h, you would go through the same thought process. So let's go ahead and solve this for H. Let's erase everything. So again, we'll rewrite this formula down here. Area or A is equal to, you have H times the quantity, uppercase B plus lowercase B, and this is over two. How can I get H by itself? Well, before I go through and use my distributive property, let's just clear the denominator. Let's multiply this side by two and this side by two. So this cancels. So now I have 2A is equal to, 
I have H, again, multiplied by the quantity, big B or uppercase B plus small b or lowercase b. Now, if I want h by itself, what can I do? h is being multiplied by something here. Erase this and imagine that you had 4h and you wanted h by itself. You would just divide both sides by 4, right? What's multiplying h? Well, let's go back now. This quantity here is multiplying h. So all I've got to do is just divide both sides of the equation by that quantity, big b plus little b, so big B plus little b, and I've got my answer, right? This is going to cancel. And so what I'm left with here, I'm going to put H is equal to, you have 2A over bigger B or capital B plus lower B or smaller B, okay? So now it's in terms of H. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up this problem by solving the equation for the lowercase b now. And again, the idea is always the same. If I'm solving for the lowercase b, I just want lowercase b on one side of the equation, and I want an expression on the other, okay? So very, very easy. So we have that a is equal to, we've got h multiplied by the quantity, you've got your uppercase b plus your lowercase b, and this is over 2. And let's get some room going here. Now, there's many ways to start this problem. You can start by using your distributive property to remove the parentheses, because ultimately you need to get to that b, and it's inside of parentheses right now, so that's one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is you can clear the denominator first. So we can do that, and let's just start by that. So we'll go ahead and cancel this with this, and we'll do 2a is equal to, we've got h times the quantity, you've got your uppercase b plus your lowercase b. Now, you can use your distributive property to remove parentheses, that's fine, that's one way to do it, or another way, and probably a faster way, you can just divide both sides of the equation by h, right? Because if you divide both sides of the equation by h, then you can go ahead and remove those parentheses. And you'll have access to this lowercase b here. So I'll have 2a over h on the left. And this is equal to, now I just have the capital letter b plus the lowercase b on the right, okay? So to solve for the lowercase b now is very, very easy. I just have this capital letter b that's being added to it. So I'm just going to subtract the capital letter B away from each side of the equation. And so I'm going to end up with 2A over H minus the capital letter B. And this is equal to the lowercase b, okay? And if you like the variable on the left, like I do, you can rewrite this. You can say lowercase b is equal to 2A over H and then minus uppercase b. Now you'll notice that we don't have a common denominator here. If we want a common denominator, we can get one. We can just multiply this by h over h. If we would have used the distributive property, we would have gotten one. So this is just a matter of personal preference. It's the same answer either way. So I can write this as lowercase b is equal to 2a minus uppercase b times h all over the common denominator of h. Or again, it's the same thing if we say lowercase b is equal to 2a over h minus uppercase b. All right, let's look at some other problems. So suppose I wanted to solve this for just x. So z times the quantity ax minus bd plus nq equals nx minus a. How can I solve this for x? I have an x here and I have an x here. Well, if you get this scenario, you've got to get all the terms with an x involved to one side and everything else to the other. So let's go ahead and distribute this z to each term inside the parentheses. So you would have z ax minus z bd then plus nq, and this is equal to nx, and then minus a. So I want this term and this term, because they each have an x involved, on one side of the equation. I want everything else on the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract nx away from each side of the equation, and I'm going to add zbd to each side of the equation, and then I'm going to subtract nq away from each side of the equation. Okay. So a lot of stuff on the screen here. Let's go through this. So this is gone. I've canceled it. And this is gone. I've canceled it. So on the left, I'm going to have ZAX minus NX. Then this will be equal to, on the right, this is going to cancel. So I'll just have negative A plus ZBD minus NQ. Let me make that Q a little bit better. Okay, so how can I solve this for x? A lot of you, if you see this, will be perplexed. What can I do here? Well, think about this if you had something like 6x minus 4x. 
we know we can combine like terms there, but why can we do that? Well, because of the distributive property, I can pull the x out and I can say this is six minus four inside. So this becomes x times two or two x. If I use the same thought process here, I can pull my x out because it's common to each, right? So if I pull that out, inside the parentheses, I would have ZA minus N. Now I can't combine those, but that's okay. You'll see in a minute, I can just divide by that because that's what's multiplying X. And this is equal to, you have your negative A plus your ZBD, then minus your NQ. Now, again, this is multiplying X. So it's just like if I had four X is equal to 20. If four is multiplying X, I can divide both sides of the equation by four so that x is equal to 5. Same thought process here. All I want to do is divide both sides of the equation by what's multiplying x. So it's the quantity za minus n, and I'm going to divide by that over here as well. So za minus n. And it looks messy, but this is what we need to do when we have a lot of variables involved. So I've solved this for x now because this is going to cancel. You have x is equal to, you have your negative a plus your zbd, then minus your nq over, you have your za, and then minus n. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So we have 5x minus the quantity 2q plus d is equal to a times the quantity x plus 1. So we want to solve this for x, and again, the idea here is, if I want to solve it for x, I've got to first get all the variable terms with x involved on one side, and everything else on the other. So because I have an X here wrapped inside of some parentheses, let's go ahead and use our distributive property, get everything simplified. So we have five X, I have this negative out in front of these parentheses. So again, you can think about this as plus negative one. The negative one would multiply by each term. So you'd have minus two Q and then minus D. And this equals, the A is gonna multiply by each term. So A X and then plus A, okay. So I want all my, again, terms with an X involved on one side. So let's go ahead and subtract AX away from each side of the equation. And let's add 2Q to each side of the equation. And let's add D to each side of the equation, okay? So this would cancel here, this would cancel here, and this would cancel here. So on the left-hand side, I've got 5X minus AX. And this is equal to, on the right-hand side, I've got A plus 2Q plus D. All right. So now, what do I have here on the left? How can I isolate X? Well, again, I think about the process I used to combine like terms. If I have 5X minus, let's say, 6X, well, I can factor out the X there. And inside the parentheses, I would have 5 minus 6. We know five minus six is negative one, so this is negative one x. Well, here I can basically, again, do the same thing. I can factor out the x because it's common to each. So I can have x times the quantity five minus a. This is equal to a plus two q plus d. Since this quantity five minus a is multiplying x, to get x by itself, I just divide both sides by that quantity. And I'll have x by itself. So I will have X is equal to, we'll have A plus 2Q plus D over your five minus A. 